Dear Luke and Linus, thank you for trying out Linux. As a part-time YouTuber, I'm not sure if I can finish this video before your challenges, but I decided to make it anyways. I hope I can provide some helpful tips so you guys can enjoy Linux as long as possible. It took a lot of courage for a nobody like me trying to provide advices to someone like you. You might break my channel, but as a Linux fanboy, I decided to just go with it. I'm sitting here going, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. The first thing I notice is the reaction you give the audience when they're trying to suggest you to use Fedora Linux. No, we're not running Fedora. Like, come on guys, put, put real, <laughs> real serious you should get, you should suggestions. Get I don't think they're joking here because Linus Torvald, the other Linus, uses Fedora every day. He chose it because it is easy to install. Fedora has several editions, and its workstation version is targeted specifically to professionals. I used it myself several months this year for coding and content creation. Furthermore, if you want to game on it, Steam and Nvidia is super easy to enable in the system settings. Second thing is this. And Arch is clearly people wanting to make me suffer. That's another meme, like yeah, 100%. Yes, Arch itself is kind of hard to install. It requires the user to follow its wiki in the terminal during the installation process. But there are several distributions built on top of it, providing extremely easy installation process. Some examples are Garuda Linux, Reborn OS, and the one recommended by Anthony called Endeavor OS. All you need to do with these distributions is to follow the graphical interface during the installation process. Most of the time, you just need to connect to the internet, format a disk, choose your username password, choose your time zone, and wait for the installation to complete. I think it is as easy as installing Windows, if not easier. Arch is a rolling release distribution. You will be able to use the latest drivers and packages in the system. I think that is the main reason people voted for you because they know you have the access to the latest hardware, so they want you to have the smoothest possible experience in Linux. And I don't think they voted as a meme here, because if you're using the bleeding edge hardware, it is a good idea to pair them with the bleeding edge software and drivers, right? And sometimes the driver versions on Arch can be a bit newer than they are on Windows. I was able to install the NVIDIA proprietary driver 470 before my friends can install it on Windows. But do not quote me on this. Don't, don't, don't quote me on this. I actually really would prefer not to be quoted on this. Because I didn't record any evidence back then to support my statement here. Now I want to provide some advice to Luke. It seems that you're a Mint fan. But I was sort of planning on just going Mint again, because that's what I did in the past, and I yeah. was decently happy with what it had to offer. I agree that Mint has a super easy installation process and a great user interface. But if you're using newer hardware, I suggest give some other distribution a try. I've tried to install Mint on my 2020 gaming laptop. It refuses to boot into the graphical interface without any tinkering. I'm not suggesting against Mint here. It is a rock solid distribution. And it is my favorite Debian-based Linux distribution of all time. What I'm saying here is that first, there are a lot of distributions nowadays providing the exact same level of easiness when it comes to installation process and user interface. And second, Mint is just more suitable for those who have older hardware. Because at the time of this recording, which is October 2021, Mint is still using the Linux kernel from December 2019 out of the box. With this out of the way, let's look at some Linux tips. One of the games that I haven't played in a while, but that I do really enjoy, um, Anno 1800, it, is, is Ubisoft Connect even available on, on Linux? I, I don't even know. I don't even know. The easiest way to play Ubisoft games on Linux is to prepare two things, Lutris and Ubisoft Connect. Because Anthony recommended Endeavor OS and Pop OS. Oh boy, yep, there's Anthony. Anthony's hitting me up. Uh, Where is it? Oh, he says Pop okay. or Endeavor is probably my pick. Endeavor is Arch based but user friendly, like Manjaro. Arch based tends to have more bleeding edge packages in kernel, which is good for gaming. Also, Arch Wiki, Pop is Ubuntu based, so a lot just translates. Yep, okay. I'm gonna show you how to set them up on both of these systems. 
To install Lutris, go to Lutris website, click on download, scroll down to Arch Linux section, copy the command to your terminal, specify your password, enter yes to confirm the installation. Lutris will be able to launch after the installation. To install Lutris on Pop OS, go to their official website, click on download, copy these commands one at a time. Launch Lutris after. To install Ubisoft Connect, go to your browser and search for Lutris Ubisoft. Go to this website and click on Install button. Choose Lutris to open the link. Click on Install. Select the location you want to install it to. Click on Continue. Wait for the installation to finish in Wine. After it's finished, you can create desktop shortcut or application manual shortcut and then launch Ubisoft Connect. It will pop up with a login page. After you log into your Ubisoft account, you can start installing the game you own. Because I don't have the Anno 1800, I will be showing you the gameplay of Assassin's Creed Origin. And also I want to mention I plugged in this Xbox controller without needing to install any additional drivers for it to work. Let's install some softwares. I noticed that you guys are using Microsoft Teams and Spreadsheet. So let's jump into the installation part. The easiest way to install these softwares, we need to go to flathub.org. Click on Quick Setup. If you're using Endeavor OS, click on Arch. And if you're using Pop OS, click on Pop. And follow the instruction here. In most cases, you just need to copy some commands and restart the system. After the reboot, come back to this page and search for Microsoft Teams. Click on the first one, scroll down the page and copy this command. Open up the terminal and paste the command. After the installation is done, you can find it in your application menu. Similarly, you can also install Discord from FlatHub. FlatHub also provides you all kinds of other popular applications like Spotify and VLC. And to install Office, we can just search Office here. And I'm gonna install the WPS Office. If we go to Applications here, we should see Spreadsheet available. Now let's replicate the workflow you have on Windows. So I typically manage my Windows in four quadrants. So I'll have my Microsoft Teams up here. I'll have uh, my browser that usually has Trello open up here. I'll usually have my sheet uh, or something I'm cross-referencing, like my sheet of video ideas over here, and then I'll have like my email over here. Oops, over here, and then I'll have my email over here. So I've got this, this routine. Now let me show you how to make this happen on Linux. For Endeavor OS, it depends on which desktop environment you chose to install in the first place. But by default, if you go for the offline mode in the installation process, you will automatically install the XFCE edition. So let me show you how to make it happen. First, go to the Settings Manager, Window Manager, click on Keyboard. And if you scroll down, you will see all these shortcuts. I'm going to change upper left to super U, upper right to super I, bottom left super J, bottom right to super K. Now you can open up the application one by one and hit the key binding. Now let's see how to replicate it on Pop OS. All you need to do is to click on this icon and enable the tile windows. 
And now, just start your application in order. And if you don't like how they stack to each other, you can click on Super and Y to change the format. And you can also hold Super and drag one of them to the position of your liking. That is all the tips I can think of to provide you with a better experience on Linux. I hope it is still not too late when I publish this video. I hope you guys can let me know if you have any other difficulties using Linux. And thank you for watching. Yours, Hugo.